soil. It's the engine of your garden. It's the lifeblood of your plants and thus your crops and your vegetables. It is the optimal conditions and parameters in your soil that allow your garden to produce the best fruits and vegetables possible. You know, moisture and temperature are the most common soil parameters that gardeners concern themselves with, and rightly so. Too cold or too hot, you know, too dry or too wet. If any of those conditions are out of the range of the plant's requirements, it can quickly manifest itself into poor growth and poor production. That's noticeable and that's tangible almost right away. And because of this, that's usually the only two conditions that gardeners worry about. But there's a silent killer in gardens and too often it's overlooked and that's soil pH. Now what is pH? Well pH is a scale. It is a scale of measurement to measure a liquid or a soil's acidity or alkalinity. It is a 14 point scale with seven being neutral and anything under that being acidic and anything above that being alkaline or basic. And so what do plants prefer? Well, the majority of your fruits, vegetables, and herbs prefer a pH range of 6.0 to 6.8. It is in this pH range that allows your plants to grow the best and thus produce the best. So how do we find out the pH of our soil? Well, to do that, you need a tool. You need a pH meter. Now, this is just a $10 meter off of Amazon. I'll throw an affiliate link uh, to this product down below. And you can find these, you know, at most garden centers or hardware stores. So this particular meter here also reads light levels and moisture levels. Most of the meters that you get are not just strictly pH. They will also read moisture. So let's just try reading the moisture first. You can see I've got the tab uh, set to read moisture. You can see the dial is set to zero because, you know, we're not in the ground. So let's insert this guy into the ground and see what it reads. Well, that's some pretty dry soil. Now you can see the dial is a little bit on the dry side and that makes sense, you know, because this bed hasn't been watered in about a week. So let's go ahead and flick it to pH and see what this guy reads. So right now it is reading at a pH of about 7.5. As we talked about earlier in the plant world, you want to be between 6 and 6.8. So let's go try another bed. So here we have that new strawberry bed that I planted from Split Up Strawberry Crowns. It's a very interesting video. I'll throw a link to it down below. So let's see what its soil parameters are. Now first up, you gotta clean the probes, okay? Every time you use this, you gotta wipe those probes off so that you're not introducing conditions from the previous bed. I'm going to go ahead and plunk this guy in. So as you can see, we're on the moisture setting and it is reading quite a high moisture. Now that makes sense. I just watered that this morning. So as far as moisture is concerned, you know, this little meter seems to be, you know, at least somewhat accurate. So let's now flick it to pH and see what we're dealing with. And we're right on the seven. So not too bad. I expected it to read a little bit less um, because there is a lot of peat in here. But that's also only at the surface. So quite likely these probes have gone down far enough um, into my compost. And, you know, it's reading at a pH of neutral. Which, you know, judging by these strawberries, the way they're bouncing back is completely fine.
Okay, so we now know the optimal soil pH range for our plants to grow in, and we also know how to measure that pH in our soil using a pH meter. So that leads into the next question. If we have a pH problem, how do we fix it? Once you have a known and defined pH problem, the solution is almost always using a soil additive to correct it. So the two most common soil additives that professional farmers use are dolomite lime and elemental sulfur. Both are readily available, quite inexpensive, and they come in a dry form for easy storage. They don't really expire, they don't go bad, and so they're always available if you need them. Now, elemental sulfur is an inert ingredient. It doesn't dissolve in water, and it's only activated with soil microbes. So to get this sulfur to release itself into the soil, to decrease your pH, that is, to make it more acidic, it has to actually go into the soil. You can't put it on top, and you can't try to dissolve it into a solution to spray on your garden beds. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way. You know, read the packaging very carefully before you start applying this to your garden to decrease your pH. Now, dolomite lime is also very inexpensive. It is readily found at any garden center or any hardware store. You know, because it is used on grasses and lawns, it's a product that's always around. So, dolomite lime is actually just calcium carbonate ground up. And often, you'll find it infused with magnesium and other beneficial elements. Again, Check the manufacturer's bag or the website for the recommended application rates. So there are many, many soil additives that you can use to manipulate your soil pH. So why did I pick these two in particular? Well, the reason I picked these two is that one, they're very effective at what they do. But two, they're very inexpensive. They're always available, like we talked about before. And because they're dry, they're easy to store. And not only that, they're quite safe. But on top of all those things, you know, as well as being able to control your pH, these guys are macronutrients. You know, sulfur, you know, could very well be in the big three. It could be the fourth ingredient, you know, in your NPK mixtures. Sulfur is highly important in your garden. It is highly important for plant functions. Now, similarly, you know, dolomite lime is calcium carbonate. Well, calcium is very important in your garden. It is important for the cell walls of all your plant leaves and your fruit. You know, you guys combating blossom end rot will know the importance of calcium in your garden. So next time you're looking to control your pH, you know, if you need to increase it because it's too acidic, look at dolomite lime. And similarly, if you're looking to decrease your pH because it's too alkaline, look no further than elemental sulfur. So that's it for today, guys. I know a lot of you know about soil chemistry and the importance of soil pH, but I also know there's a lot of you out there that are only looking at soil moisture and soil temperature. And that's fine. You know, soil pH problems aren't super common, but the first thing people think about when they start seeing yellow leaves or deteriorating plants is that, oh no, I need to fertilize it. I need to put something in the garden to feed my plants. And a lot of times that's not the case. Yes, your plants could be starving, but it's not because there's no nutrients in the soil. It's because the pH has locked them up and they're not available for those plants to take out. So simply adding more nutrients isn't going to help the situation. So do yourself a favor and get a simple, inexpensive pH meter so that when problems do arise in your garden, you're able to tackle them properly and efficiently. As always, leave any questions or comments down below. Have you experienced soil pH problems? How have you dealt with it? And how effective was it? I'd love to hear from you guys. Click subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have, I really do appreciate the support. And I'll see you next time.